You've got questions? She's got answers. It's Ask Nurse Lisa. Welcome to my office and welcome to the show. Got my nurse hat back out. Times are tough. There is no better time than the present for health education, and that's what I'm here for. I'm Nurse Lisa, and I'm here to bring you great interviews, all the latest in medical news, and of course the most important thing, your comments and questions, your health needs and concerns. So let's get right to it with our comment question of the week. Hi, I'm Bright Socks, and here's my question for Ask Nurse Lisa. So, you guys sweat, don't you? Um, usually after you've done lots of exercise or physical activity. Well, I think I have a problem. I've done something as little as walk down the road, and I've got massive sweaty patches on my armpits, and sometimes my back. I don't have to do a lot before I break into a sweat, and it's really annoying because I'll be at work, and I've, it's just it, it looks gross. Um, is there a particular reason why I'm sweating after doing so very little? And is there something that I can do to try and prevent the amount of sweat that I produce? Because I've tried deodorants, antiperspirants, and none of them seem to work. I really would like your help on this, please. And I'm sure it will help other people, I hope, otherwise I'm just weird. And gross. And sweaty. That is a very good question. If it helps, you are not alone. About one in every hundred people suffer from the same condition. So you're definitely not alone. It is a treatable medical condition, but let's start from with the basics, things that you can do at home and your lifestyle. First of all, be very careful with the fabrics that you choose for your clothing. They should be natural, very permeable, very breathable. Not all cotton is made the same and certainly not cotton blends. So that's very, very important. The one problem that people may be concerned with in this condition is odor. So soaps that say antibacterial are very, very important for underarms, feet, hands. I do not recommend antibacterial soap for the groin area and um, regular soaps that do not have any scent or perfumes or antibacterial qualities should only be used in that type of area. Because this is a condition where the nervous system seems to be more active. So what are the things you can do about that? Reduce caffeine and other types of stimulants, including those maybe in hot spicy foods. Of course I would have a trouble with that. So but once you've done these sort of things and you're still having a lot of trouble, it's time to go see the doctor because it can become a serious condition. So what kind of tricks does the doctor have up their sleeve? Let's start with prescriptions. You have prescription antiperspirants and you also have oral medications. Now it should be noted that oral medications that are prescribed for this condition are normally prescribed primarily for other conditions. So it's very, very important that your doctor will see how you do on these things and give you some relief, but probably it's not a long-term solution for management of the condition, but it may be something that works for you. Another arsenal is Botox injections. That's right, you heard me, Botox injections. You know, they were using them for wrinkles and they started finding out all kinds of things. They use them for migraine headaches, and now, very commonly, to treat this condition. Underarm areas, hands, feet. So, talk to your doctor about that. It is not a solution where you do it once and it's taken care of, but people have found some relief. There is another treatment option called iontophoresis. Now, this is a little device which is connected to two trays of water. The device puts out a mild current and that current interacts with the nerve conduction in your hands or your feet. And uh, it has to be done more than once and so it's not something that you can just do once and the problem is solved. 
you do it with a provider or you can get one of these devices and do it at home. If you do choose that method for whatever reason, please be advised that not all of those devices are created equal. So do your homework. I hope this helps. Oh, and if you have a comment or question, if you've got a health concern, just send me a message and I'll get you here on the show. We'll talk about it. I'll see you next week on Ask Nurse Lisa.